What's up, everybody? Um, we are live here as Love and Relo, voice of the relocation industry. I'm your host, Ben Cross. Today, it's really all about you. And uh, <laughs> oh, I thought I thought I got Tim Quirk popping in over here, and uh, he made a comment: biggest mistake you've made in Relo. I thought he was talking about this actual show, doing cocktails and questions right now, because that is the theme. We are uh, having a little. Having a little cocktail right now. I just got done with a uh, AMSA 40 Below networking cocktail hour. Um, I needed some content today, frankly, and people kept asking me, what are you doing today? And I was like, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't have anything. And they're like, well, you know, I'd love to see something, you know, put something out. And I was like, you know what? Just because I don't have a guest schedule today doesn't mean I can't put something out. And I said, you know what, let me, let me kind of crowdsource this because there's a lot of people that want to like participate and get in the mix here, but they don't want to get on camera. They don't want to do something live, um, but they love asking questions. And so I just want to open it up and really make this about you guys. So um, Tim, I'm going to start off with Tim here. I got a question live here on YouTube. Biggest mistake you've made in Relo. I'm going to assume this is not a commentary on this specific show and what we're doing here. And instead, it's actually a question. So the biggest mistake I've made in Relo. The biggest mistake I've made in Relo was thinking short term and not long term. Um, thinking about, you know, hustling and making a buck, but not thinking about my long term reputation, building a brand, um, building something that's built to last trying to uh run down the hill and get all the you know you know get all the money or get get the money quick and and not think about you know walking down and getting it all you know and um a lot of you all know that story and, and that analogy but i think i think we have to be conscious of being long-term thinkers i think this is a great time to remind us to be long-term thinkers here we are in a very crappy near-term situation right now and it's it's the best time to think long term and so i would say for those of you who are out there right now and are thinking about um what's the right play well it's the it's the inverse of the biggest mistake i made uh so the biggest mistake i made was thinking short term the right play is to think long term and realize that talent is cheap right now um you know everybody's uh you know a little bit of money goes a long way right now um, due to where the economy is and build something that is, you know, obviously you got to make it through this period, but build something that's, you know, built to last and, uh, you know, built for the long term. Tim says, great answer. Thanks. Hey, appreciate you, Tim. Hey, we got a little music going on too. Let me know if it's annoying, if the music needs to be a little louder, you know, because I want to kind of turn up a little bit uh, today. So let me know if you, you can hear me. Let me know if the music's annoying or a nice touch or whatever. Uh, give me feedback. Without you guys, I don't know what this is like out here. I got a bunch of people on Facebook and YouTube. Go ahead and check in right now. I want to give some shout outs. Uh, let's see. It looks like Oded Carmi's got questions. What up? I got cues. All right. Well, hit me, bro. Don't talk about it. Be about it, man. Don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. Let me know what it is, man. Shabang, shabang. So yeah, let me know. I got a bunch of questions lined up as well from um, from everybody. Uh, my good friend Janet Turner, who's also been helping me out. Hey, shout out to you, Janet. Cheers to you. I love you so much. You've been such an inspiration to me. Um, you've really believed in what I've been doing, and so uh, and so this margarita is for you, Janet. So if, if you're if you're having a sip, if you're drinking along with us, raise your glass right now to Janet Turner who's just a wonderful human being. And if you don't know Janet right now, take the time to get to know Janet, connect with her because she's such a source of inspiration for me and encouragement. So to you, Janet, Laheim. Speaking of Laheim, tonight is um, Seder, I believe. So I'm not Jewish, but I do believe that I'm grafted into the vine as a Christian. So I want to say happy Seder to my Jewish uh, brothers and sisters out there. So I hope you are enjoying your uh, beginning of Passover. I believe it's tonight. So um, so happy Seder to you at sundown, I believe. So if you're watching this, this might be the uh, the last thing you do for uh, for a little bit. So uh, anyway, um, happy Seder to you. If you are uh, celebrating, please let me know how you're celebrating. Are you getting together with family? You know, what's going on as we sit around the table? Obviously, we're not allowed to really... Uh, 
to really do too much and stuff and get out. But, um, yeah, this song's whack. Anyway, yeah, this will, this will work. Um, but, yeah, are you getting around with, like, your, your, your immediate kind of nuclear family? You know, is it going to be kind of a low-key deal? Let me know. Uh, let's see here. We got some folks coming in here. <laughs> oh, Dad, what's your favorite Love and Relo episode? Well, you know, I just shout out, out Janet, and Janet was one of my early episodes. And when I made that episode, I said, this is one of the most important episodes I've ever made. Um, because it was about what was at the heart of, it was about what was at the heart of um, the reason I made it, which is the love, right? And it's about the, the people that we meet and the relationships that are formed, which are always way more important than a white paper on tax or some new latest greatest household goods technology it's about the people and we should never lose sight of that it's about the love put love first right it is it is the greatest commandment so um to love others love god and love others so um so in that respect that was one of the best uh most important ones the best one um one of my favorite ones to do was the one I did with Angelo, uh, one of our uh, sales guys, our COD sales guys, talking about the uh, the rogue movers that are just getting people out there and scamming people on the internet, where we actually put his phone number into the internet and had these uh, scam artists call him, and we took calls live on the air, and so people could hear the scam, the tomfoolery, the hijinks, the shenanigans that were going on on the internet, and I think that was so important and so fun to do. I think that is... The, the the ease of finding people that will quote you $1,000 to move your stuff cross country is at the heart of why we have a lump sum problem in the relocation industry. And so exposing those people for the charlatans that they are, I think was one of the most fun things that I've done. Um, so those are two of my favorites. And then tomorrow I'm trying to coax my wife into coming on tomorrow as my guest because it's our 10 year anniversary tomorrow. Uh, we were married April 10th, 2010. Shout out to Joe Dudek who shares the same exact wedding day of, uh, as me and my wife, Olivia. Um, but I wanna bring her on. She wants me to wear a tux. Um, we're gonna get dressed up. We're gonna actually kind of do like a little vow renewal uh, blessing thing. My dad was actually the, um, uh, the minister at our wedding, the officiant. And so, uh, cause he's an ordained minister. So he's actually going to uh, perform um, a little blessing kind of thing for us. We're gonna bring our kids in there. I got a green screen. So we're gonna go back and put up a picture of where we got married. So anyway, I'm trying to get her to come on uh, tomorrow and uh, be a guest. So hopefully that happens. If not, you know, I mean, who would really wanna do that? So I may, I may not be successful in convincing her to do that, but that's what I wanna do tomorrow. So that could also be one of the epic Love and Relo episodes. Um, Tim's putting a little cocktail up there. Hey, cheers, Tim. Hey, if you guys want to do a little toast or a little cheers, just put a little drink uh, emoji up in there and let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll toast you. Mm. This margarita is fantastic, by the way. If you're a margarita person, I just want to give some shout-outs real, real quick. Espelon. Espelon tequila. This is a reposado. It's affordable. It's not cheap, but it's... You know, twenty-seven, twenty-eight dollars a a bottle. Um, it's it's affordable and uh, but very tasty, very delicious. So I've combined a little Espelon Reposado because I like the I like the brownishness gives a little bottom, and then this right here is the best margarita mix that I've ever had, and it uses fresh lime juice. Um, I say fresh lime juice; it's in a bottle, but real lime, real agave, real good. It's about eight ninety-nine at my Kroger uh, for a thirty-three ounce bottle. Um, it's it's it's, it's freaking unbelievable. So anyway, that is the summer drink du jour. Cheers to me and having a good time. I hope you are having a good time too. So let me know uh, if you're watching this right now. Drop one real quick. Shout out your name. Shout out your company. Shout out where in the world you are right now. Uh, also, let me know what you're sipping on. Uh, let's do a little quick, quick little roll call. See what you're sipping on here. Janet says, I love you. I love you too, Janet. You're the best. Janet's been helping me out lately and I hope it's good for you, Janet. Because uh, you've been a, a great help for me. Jason Rollins, Express Corporate Housing in the house. Cheers. Tim over here. Uh, even Miss Beal is watching and toasting along today. Shout out to you, Amber. Uh, Amber just had a baby a little, little while ago. Hope you're enjoying a little uh, a little refreshment. You deserve it. Uh, God bless. Uh, Tim Quirk, you know, throwing it back there. Appreciate the emojis. Janet, a little toast to you, Janet. Mm. Jennifer 
Raposa. Cheers to you. At First Class Moving Systems. All right. Shout out to my people down there in Florida. All right. Let's see here. Got the bad boys. Man, this this I tried to put a little I tried to put a little dance party on here. Let me know if this is too loud for you. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. Let's see here. Let's see if we're live on LinkedIn yet, because I'm not seeing the little alert here. Man, I wish LinkedIn would get it together. I'll tell you what. You know, it's like it's been in beta. This thing's been like a, a like a thing for like a year. And it's been a bait. Oh, if I go LinkedIn, then okay. I got 16 here. Okay, let's get some shout outs here. David Sharon, happy anniversary. Hey, thank you, David. I appreciate you very much. Uh, Patrick Dotson, Ben, not Ben. Sorry, congrats. So I must have missed all the comments. So any comment that happened before David Sharon, happy anniversary, I did not see. LinkedIn uh, did not queue that up for me. So repost that so I can give you a shout out. Uh, Kelly Gurren, cheers. Cheers to you, Kelly. Appreciate you always tuning in, Kelly, out there in Phoenix. Mm. Erica Burton, one of my favorite people. Erica, you're so much fun. Cheers to to the Buzzball Queen of Columbus. Patrick Dotson, Gulp Gulp. Hey Patrick, I hear you're uh, hear you're hosting the uh, Independent Movers uh, conference out there in Fort Worth in Cowtown. That's gonna be a good time. I'd love to make it out there. I hope I, I hope I get to. It's gonna be um, on my birthday, November. Oh, here's one. Here's a good one. Ken Nickel Lane, Ben, isolation haircuts, discuss. Oh, the hat, I see. So, Ken, A, you're correct. The hat does, in part, have something to do with isolation haircuts, although I would submit to you that I'm still looking pretty crispy, pretty crispy, at least from the front. So I always say, I say, so I went, I went ahead and did kind of a hack job on the back. I'm going to show it to you guys because I'm feeling a little wild right now. So this is the back of my head right here. You see this? You see this wildness right here? You see how it just kind of goes? So I basically just totally gave up. So I did the front. I did the front. I tried to go a little Ron Burgundy in the front, you know, keep it classy, you know, San Diego. And then in the back, I'm straight Joe Dirt, you know. I'm straight Tiger King in the back. So that's kind of what I'm working with right now, you know. But the hat really is all about the margarita, having a good time. But uh, thanks, Ken. appreciate you calling me out. You guys, you Canadians, you love your mullets, don't you? There you go. I'm seeing myself in my video right now. How ridiculous is that haircut? It's so ridiculous. Brian Justice, cheers, y'all. Thank you so much for doing this. I enjoy these so much. I appreciate you, Brian. Your comment means the world to me. Thank you so much. All right. Facebook. And by the way, Facebook is a great way to watch the show because when you watch it on Facebook, you get to do little things like this. Jack Champell. Hi, Ben. Hi, Jack. Cheers to you, Jack. Let's see here. Let's take this down. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Julia O'Connor. Juliet, I am with a glass of wine. Cheers to you, Julia. Patrick Dodson, Firefighter's Finest. Tempo picking up in Texas. Positive vibe from D.C. Staff showed life today. That's awesome. Hosea Botley. Good old H2O up in Seattle. Appreciate you. Shout out to Jose, a good friend of mine. Olivia Barami, that drink looks good. I better go fix myself one. Yes, you do, Olivia. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Katie Linhan, music, great ad. Oh, we like the music. Okay. Correct. Excited. Stephanie Seligson, happy, happy hour. Happy, happy hour. Steven, Steven Seligson, happy, happy hour. Tasty brother, Ken Nickel Lane. All right. Appreciate you. Hey, if you're watching this right now, please do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that celebration button. Um, show me a little bit of um, show me a little bit of love right now. Appreciate you. It also lets everybody know that we're doing this live right now, and they can hop in and get in the mix. Uh, shout out to Jack Jampel. Love to get Jack on the show. So let's uh, let's tell Jack how much we'd love to have him on the show. He always has such great opinions right now. Uh, horse tooth margarita mix. Stay out of Malibu. Spicy. Habanero, oh, we got a whole, you know, Mark, Mark Colmer left a whole recipe here in the LinkedIn feed. Fantastic. Appreciate you. And uh, Christine Daly, cheers, cheers to you, Christine. Again, you guys are going to get me wasted. Mm. All right, 
I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ask you guys to, um, you know, maybe I can do a little beats. I can do a little music out of my, uh, out of my computer here. I don't know. All right, I gotta think this thing through. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, Caleb McCartney, what's up, Ben? Long time no see. He was on the last call I was on. Caleb, big shout out to DC. What's your favorite quarantine cocktail? All right, well, right now, I'm rocking with this margarita, right? And I told you guys about this margarita. Off the chain, go get you some of this. It's in the uh, cocktail aisle. Um, don't get that garbage, you know, Cuervo pre-mixed trash. Don't get that frozen on the border in a bucket. Um, don't try to make, I mean, listen, I've made it myself. Ryan Beal, shout out. You know, we made it, we did the summer of margarita making where we got the key limes and we got the oranges and we got the Cointreau. You know what? Just listen, get yourself a good mix, get yourself a good tequila and have yourself a good time. Okay. So that's one. So when the sun is out, that's what's, that's what, that's what I'm sipping on at night. Or if it's a, if it's kind of a, not a sunny day and the rain is kind of, you know, hitting the rooftop, you know, or maybe I'm in kind of a dark place because I'm having kind of a, a quarantine tough time. Maybe then I'll bust out an old fashioned. Uh, in that case, I'll hit like a Four Roses bourbon with a little bit of Angostura bitters, you know, and a little bit of simple and a little bit of uh, like an orange slice or something like that if I'm feeling wild. Or I'll flip it and I'll use that same Four Roses, right? And I got some fresh mint right here because I'm a big fan of the herbs you know and then I'll, uh, I'll 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 muddle that with a little bit of simple syrup and make myself a julep so i mean those are kind of what i'm sipping on you know right now um if i'm not having a glass of wine or a beer uh brian R brian rivers missed you the last couple days watched everything after the fact hope you are well brian out of sacramento first tech federal federal credit union brian salute mm. Jake Lowry, Benny the Jet, enjoying a classic Cuba Libre with you. That's a rum and coke for those of you keeping score at home. Brian Rivers, Costco premix margs are legit. Take your word on that, Brian. If you want to send something to the crib, holler at your boy. Let me know. Uh, let's see here. Um, mm, I've had that one. It's good. Yeah, Kelly. Kelly agrees. She appreciates it. Uh, oh, no. She, oh, she was shouting out Brian. She likes Brian's margarita better than mine. That's whack. Thumbs down you, Kelly. I'm just kidding. Love Kelly. All right, um, so hey, we got some, um, okay, we got a few more comments, and I'm going to get to some pre-questions. uh, some pre -questions. Love the haircut, Ben. Once again, nice listening industry in crazy state, but we need each other. You know what? You, you ain't lying. You ain't lying, bro. We do. We come together. Sometimes we need to commiserate because it's crazy. Um, and you know what? Recently, though, I've been trying to stay positive, right? i um, been trying to look for silver linings. My kids, you know, huge silver lining right now. Uh, Char Charlie Beatty, Acme Car Shipping in Dallas. Appreciate you, Charles. Uh, Jack Champell, was the moving industry included as essential or was it included as part of the overall trucking industry? So, Jack, great question. Um, state by state call. Um, in most states, it was grandfathered or dovetailed in with trucking. However, our friend Oded Carmi actually was successful in... Um, Lobbying with local government to get it actually specifically cited as an essential, as an essential industry in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, so either way, it's essential. Um, question is: Is all moving essential? It's debatable. You know, it actually, you know, and that definition would vary between if you're asking customers, or you're asking uh, employees. You know, um, but it, currently it is it is essential. Um, although we are seeing a uh, obviously decline in business and i think that's one of the questions i'll talk about here soon ryan bill i still have and use your citrus squeezer yeah you can get those at a uh, at like a mexican like a bodega or something like that where they uh it's like uh they're all they're all like purple they're all like magenta and uh yeah they're great they're solid good for key limes even for oranges uh oday carmi next question what was your favorite amsa convention my favorite AMSA convention, Oded, was the one I met you at in Atlanta. And um, there's only a few people that know the, the real story behind that one. But at the end of the night, we came back to the hotel and a guy got pepper sprayed in his face. He had won an award <laughs> earlier that night and he came back. I'm telling you guys a story I've never told. Like, like this is, this is really, um, 
telling on myself. I'm not telling myself. I did not get pepper spray. But we went out with a guy that won an award that night. And we went out to some places. And we ended up coming back at like 2, 3 in the morning. And dude had gotten pepper sprayed. Two guys had gotten pepper sprayed in their face. And I ended up taking one of them um, up to his room, throwing him in the shower. And uh, one of those guys we never saw again. And one of those guys uh, to this day is doing just fine. Um, but that was my favorite AMSA convention. And that was actually the one I met you at, Oded. Um, and we, uh, I think we split a beer at 2 in the morning. Uh, let's see here. What would your dream location for a moving conference? So Rachel Fisher Lines uh, asks, what would be your dream location for a moving conference? And I'm going to say it's moving relocation, general conference. Um, one of the coolest locations I went to was Vancouver, actually. IAM, International Association of Movers, had a conference in Vancouver. And I was actually fortunate enough to speak on that um, at that conference. And it was in... 20 gosh 2014 maybe and actually was on a panel um and i was only in my 20s i want to say then um am i lying maybe um anyway and uh yeah it was in vancouver it was in canada so that was the first time i had gone to a conference in another country Uh, so for me that was huge um a lot of you have probably been to conferences in other countries for me it was the first and i got to speak on it so that was like kind of a surreal moment so i would love to go to another country for a conference i've been wanting to go to Eura. Eura has them at some ridiculous locations poland um croatia um germany you know i think they were doing this one in uh in spain they got canceled so i'd love the opportunity to go to one of those um you know probably like a like a thailand or something like that or you know, somewhere that was just totally different that I had kind of excuse to go to. Um, let's see here. My dad. Hey, dad. See, this is what, as soon as I start telling crazy stories, my dad chimes in with a question, right? Uh, it's essential to those needing employment and the job is there, not here. It's essential for M&L employees. Depends on one's perspective. Um, is this a good time for corporations to consider moving their headquarters. So one of my favorite quotes I've been hearing recently is is a Warren Buffett quote that says, when others are greedy, yeah, I'm afraid when others are greedy and when when others are afraid, I'm greedy, right? And so when I look at the economy going into a massive recession right now, if I have cash on the books and then I have leverage, right? If things are cheap and I, and I have money, then I buy, and so if you have a corporation that's doing well, you probably have tremendous leverage when it comes to negotiating with states and local municipalities on the location in your headquarters. So from that standpoint, I would say, heck yeah, it is. Um, you're probably going to get phenomenal rents. You're probably going to get phenomenal tax breaks. You're probably going to have your pick of the top talent in the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, and from a pure relocation cost, talking to a lot of van lines that I've talked to, they're all lowering their prices right now. So I don't know if you could execute a move this quickly, but yeah, if you have a viable option and a, and a unction to do so, yeah, I would I would say it's a great time. Great question, Dad. Um, Billy Jenkins, oh great, cocktail hour, Blanton's bourbon, neat for me, then add a Cohiba. Well, Billy, your next level, Billy. Uh, Billy, why don't you hop on here and show me how it's done? Um, also, if anybody wants to hop on here and, and get some FaceTime, um, or if you've always wanted to be on Love and Relo and you know you never got a chance or I didn't hit you back because that happens sometimes. I'm so sorry. It's not personal. It's just I get busy. Um, hit me up. Put it in the comments. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link right now and you can hop on with me. Or you can call me. You know, I'll put my phone number out there too. Here, here's my phone number. If you want to call in right now, here, call in. I got my kids are like looking at me right now. Hey, there's Danny. He's looking at me right now. He's like, what are you doing, Dad? Come play the shark game with me. Here, let's see here. Um, if you want to call in, you can call in right now too. All right, cool. Um, so I'm gonna. I got a whole bunch of questions out here that have uh, been kind of queued up for me. So I'm going to. Um, I'm gonna read these right now for you. Okay. What's up, Kelly? Uh, let's go down. Um, how do you find time to do these podcasts? From my buddy Fast Eddie at Shipman Moving and Storage in Sacramento. You know what, um, Ed, I mean, listen, we all got the same amount of time in the day. It's just about how do we prioritize it. 
Um, for me, I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm blessed that I'm, I don't have operational responsibilities, right? So there's not fires that I have to go put out in the warehouse or if I don't do something, you know, I got to go, you know, let a guest into their uh, furnished apartment because if I don't do it, they're going to be homeless tonight. You know, I'm fortunate in that regard, right? So I get to, I get to kind of pick my spots. Um, so I just do it. And, you know, the other thing is I make a commitment to put out a daily show. Do I do that every day? No, I don't. I failed yesterday. I don't do it every day. But I will say if I haven't done it, like today, I didn't have a guest. And then I started talking about like, what time are you going on? And I'm like, ah, I was thinking about not doing it today. And they're like, well, my kids are like crying and beating each other. Um, they're like, oh, you know, I, I wanted to see you, whatever. And I'm like, oh, gosh, you know what? Screw it. You know, it's not your fault that I didn't have a guest today. I'm going to go live. I'm going to put myself on the spot. I'm going to I'm going to make an hour happen for you regardless. And uh, and that is what that is. So my kids are, you know, beating each other and screaming and doing crazy stuff out there. But, you know, I just I just make it happen. You just do it. Right. Um, I'm jealous of your wardrobe. Everybody wears golf shirts out here. I miss des dressing like Don Draper. You know, it's crazy. Right. Because I feel like casual Friday came into the workplace back in like the 80s or something so i'm told um and then casual friday turned into casual every day right and i'll tell you i went into the workplace in 2006 into like the traditional workplace and i wore a tie every day every day i wore a tie to work and people made fun of me and they're like what are you doing because i'm like a call center agent i'm like wearing a headset like this right so i'm like this guy right i'm like you know how can i help you you know whatever you know, thank you for calling Pods. This is Ben. You know, I got a tie on, whatever, right? I'm like, who do you think you are? You're making eleven dollars an hour. You know, I was happy to have it, and um, but I just did that. That's what I did, you know. And I just felt like it always gave me like a, you know, it always made me feel a different way, you know. And so I just like made that me, and I and I play by my standard, not by other people's standards. Because what'll happen is people will tell you not to dress up, and people will tell you. Why are you wearing a tie? You know, we don't do that around here. Or people will tell you, like, tone it down or don't do so much. And those people are telling you that because it makes them feel bad that you're striving and trying so hard, you know, because they're not, you know, you're putting them on the spot. You're making them look bad, you know. And I'm like, I'm not here to make people look bad, but I'm not here to not look good myself. So, you know, and plus I'm a big man, you know, I'm a big man. So if I'm a big man, I got to dress it up a little bit, you know, make you make it look good. You know, because if I don't, then I just look like a slob, you know. So I got to try a little harder because of that stuff. Um, Janice says, don't worry. It's become the norm to hear kids or dogs dogs in the background. <laughs> My kids are dogs. No, I love them. They're like, they're like the joy. But like when you're doing this, you're like, really, really? You're going to scream right now? You decide right now is a good time to hit your brother over the head with a, with a truck? You know, I'm going to think twice before I buy another truck. I'll tell you that much. Love my kids. Uh, how do you get it all done? Janet says, um, kind of to, to Ed's point, right? How do you get it all done? You just prioritize, right? So for me, this show is a priority. You know, this show is not something I do if I've done everything else. This show is something I do, then I do everything else. So for me, it's a priority. Um, and it just is. It's part of, it's, it's a keystone habit. It's a part of my personal commitment. It's a part of who I am as a person. I've decided I'm going to do it. Plus, I get to hold myself accountable. So I'm out here doing it with y'all. And like, God forbid, I slip and I slack one day. And someone's like, hey, did you go on yesterday? Because I didn't notify you. No, I didn't go on yesterday. I was feeling kind of lazy. I didn't have anything set up, whatever. So, you know what? I just, and so I hold myself accountable to it. Um, next one, packages. What's the best thing you've gotten in the mail? Yo, so I got something in the mail today. And I don't actually know what it is. This is like not a... Like, I, I legit don't know what it, I think I know what it is, but I don't actually know what it is. So I got some scissors. So I'm going to find out what it is. So I'm going to ask you right now, bear with me. I'm going to go open it and I'm going to find out what it is. And I think it's, I think it's from, from, uh, from Move for Hunger, but I don't know. So bear with me. Don't go anywhere. It's taking 20 seconds. Okay. I know I'm not probably supposed to do this, but I'm going to actually go get this package and I'm going to show you what it is. So this is legit not even open right now. This package is not even opened. 
This could be like, I don't know what this could be. I mean, it's probably gonna be good. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I don't know what it is. But one of the best parts of my day in quarantine mode is getting packages, right? So I'm gonna find out what this is right now. Hey, Jennifer, I see you. Hey, Sandra, I see you. Let's see here. So I'm gonna open this, and while I do it, I'm also going to. This is probably really bad TV, but I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway, because it's real. This is real life right here. Let's see what it is. This is like kind of stuffed. It actually says Chicago Land on it, but I don't think that's important. I think somebody just. Oh yeah. See, this is what I thought it was. This is great. You know, like Christmas comes and you're like, what is it? I hope it's a Red Ryder BB gun. You know, what it is. Let's see what it is. So this right here, I know what this is. So this right here, can everybody see it? Can everybody see this? All right. Oh, this is special. This is really special. So what's the best thing I got in the mail so far? Is actually this and it came today. This is the Move for Hunger. I'm about to drop this shit. <laughs> this is the Move for Hunger 2019 Mover of the Year trophy for University Moving and Storage. We were chosen among thousands and thousands of movers um, nationwide as the Move for Hunger Mover of the Year award winner. And this is probably the biggest honor that I've ever gotten in my entire career. I've won, a, I've, won, I've won my share of awards, um, but this one is super special because this one is, this one, I don't know about you, but I don't like being hungry. I get really hangry. I get really frustrated. To think about kids that go to school and they're hungry when they get there and they may be the only meal they eat is that free lunch and now they're in quarantine mode and they don't even get free lunch to think about that right there meanwhile i'm eating three square meals a day with dessert i got my rice krispie treats i got everything right and these kids don't have anything you know and so for me this is everything for me um i appreciate you so much adam lowey i appreciate you um you know, the whole team, um, Margo and Kasha and, you know, there's just so many people that have been so helpful. Uh, we've put together two Detroit truck pulls. We've raised 60, over $60,000 in the last two years. Um, over 10,000 pounds of food we collected. I even drove a truck. I don't have a license drive truck, but I did. I drove a little pack van. Um, we went out to Kroger, you know, partnership with, um, shout out to Kroger um, for supporting us with food, with money, everything. Um, I just thank you so much to Move for Hunger. Thank you so much to all of our corporate partners, our RMCs, our temp housing companies, um, other moving companies, everybody from the Detroit Regional Relocation Council who got involved. Um, thank you so much to everybody. Hey, guys. hey, hey Danny, how you doing? Um, thank you so much to everybody. I, I love you guys so much. Um, and thank you to everybody that, that kind of voted for us and, and helped us win this. This means the world to me. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to cry. But thank you so much. Um, cheers. Cheers to all you guys that support Move for Hunger out there for making a difference in your community. Um, you know, here's the other thing, too, about that, right? People, you know, people say I'm an influencer, right? I'm a relocation influencer, a moving influencer, whatever. When I look around at all of you who are watching this right now, each one of you are influencers. You're leaders in your organization. You employ people. You lead them. You inspire them. They go home. They are leaders in their household. They're leaders in their community. They, by virtue, make their communities a better place. So we all have the opportunity to be leaders. We all have the opportunity to be influencers don't squander that opportunity that God has given you in your life. Um, you have been appointed and anointed to be a leader, so go be that, okay? And this is not a religious thing. You could 
say you could attribute it whoever you want to, but at the end of the day, you're all blessed because you're all watching this on an iPhone or a tablet or a laptop. Most of you are still drawing a check despite this craziness that's going on. So you're all blessed. Um, and even even in our challenges, we're blessed. So um, make sure that you you always remember that. Make sure you always try to try to help other people um, who aren't as fortunate as us. And that, that truly is the meaning. So um, appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Love y'all. And we're going to get some more questions. Oh, it's getting good. All right. Um, are you still doing happy hour? Simon Johns. Hey, Simon. Simon's a, a Tangeray man, if I do recall. Um, it's Simon, you know, Simon's another good example of, of people that I've like connected with and like formed a bond with and become friends with who I had no idea even existed, you know, six months ago. So um, appreciate you, Simon, for your question and checking in. Um, I did five happy hours last week or two weeks ago. Um, that was a lot. I did a happy hour for every time zone. That was a lot. Um, everybody else is doing happy hours right now. I don't know if I'm needed in the happy hour space. But what I do want to do is I do want to make sure that everybody has access to a happy hour. I don't know if I need to be the guy hosting it. I don't know if it's got to be the Ben show. But I think everybody needs access to a happy hour, right? We all need a friend, okay? So here's what I'm thinking. You tell me what you think about this. And I want to see it. I want to see it in the comments, okay? What do you think about a place? Like, and maybe it's the Love and Reload page on Facebook. This is what I'm thinking. Maybe, so we have a Love and Reload page on Facebook. So if you're watching this right now on YouTube or you're watching this right now on LinkedIn, I want you to open up another window. I want you to go to Facebook. I want you to search Love and Relo, Love Space and, spelled out, Space Relo. I want you to find it. I want you to like it. I want you to follow it, okay? Because there's some really good content on there. And if you have an update in the relocation industry, feel free to put it on there, okay? If you have um, some knowledge you're putting out, if you have a video, if you have a podcast, if you have a, promote it there. I want just, just, just make it your own. Just go crazy, okay? But if you have a happy hour that you're hosting, put it on there. So if you're doing the, the Houston Relocation Professionals Happy Hour, for instance, right? Shout out to Michelle Velasquez. Had her on two days ago. You know, put a link to that on there. So I would love to get everybody who's got a happy hour in the relocation global mobility space across time zones across the world. Shout out to England. Shout out to Asia. Put a link to your happy hour or the details or how people can get involved. Put it on the Love and Relo page. And that way, anybody that's following, I think we have like 200 followers now on that page. And it's just growing like crazy. And please share it and encourage other people to get on it. But put a link to that on that page, and then we can make that a central repository. So when people are like, gosh, you know, I had a tough day, you know, gosh, just lost my job. Gosh, you know, what's everybody else seeing out there? I really need to have a cocktail with some friends or meet some people or network because all the regionals are canceled right now. They can go on there and they can find out what happy hours are cracking. So I sh it, the permission should be open. Anybody should be able to post anything on there. If you got COVID-19 updates, if you got new content, if it's stuff particularly relevant, you know, go on there, make it your own. I know Tim Nowak posted something. Shout out to Tim. I know Nicole Borelli uh, posted something about being an intercultural company uh, on there. So go on there and make that your own. And, uh, you know, mi casa su casa. Salute. Uh, so that's that with that, Simon. Um, but, Simon. If nobody goes on there and nobody posts a happy hour, which is utterly ridiculous, I don't know why anybody would do that, you and I can still have a drink, buddy. Just hit me up and we'll get on a house party or something, something wild. How's business? Why you got to talk about shit like that? <laughs> I love you, Brad. How's business? Um, tough, bro. Real tough. Tough, man. I'll tell you this, though. I'm blessed because it's not non-existent. Okay? I fully expected this week to have zero orders. But God is good. I did not have zero orders. I had four. I had four orders. And you know what? Four keeps the lights on. I had four last week also. Keeps the lights on. I'd probably have triple that this time of year, maybe more. But four keeps the lights on. So shout out to the companies that sent me orders last week. Um, Archibald Relocation, uh, Arc Relocation, uh, Serva Relocation. You know, shout out to everybody that sent me orders. Um, if you're a client of mine and you're watching this and you didn't send me an order, yeah, 
that's cool. I get it. You can't give what you don't have. But if you got one, hey, holla at your boy. I need it, you know? Appreciate it. Um, let's see what the next question is. Uh, what is it like working from home with kids? Rachel Fisher Lyons, Olympia Moving, Boston Mass. Shout out to Rachel, who was also on the happy hour earlier. Um, and I'm going to go. I see all these questions and comments piling up on Facebook. I see them piling it up on uh, LinkedIn as well. So I'm going to go hit these after this question. What's it like working at home with kids? You know, you see it. Kids are hitting each other. They're screaming. They're crying. You know, um, they just went for a walk. Thank God my wife took them for a walk down the street. I can see them out here. They're peeking in the window. Hey, Dad, how's it going? Let's play the shark game. You know, and it's like, I love you, boys. And we will. Just give me a moment. Dad's going to have a margarita with some people he's never met before. Um, you know, so of course you feel like, okay, am I a bad dad? Um, you know, plus before I used to go away, I used to go to the office, you know, I'd go to the office and, you know, I'd go do work. I'd come home and I'd walk through that door. I'd be a hero and, you know, we'd eat some dinner and we'd wrestle a little bit and life is good. Um, now I'm in the house all day long and they kind of peek in the office and see what's going on. And they, is it time to play? Is it time to play? And, um, every once in a while I can pop out and I can, you know, play with them a little bit and sometimes I got to buckle down and do a, a call or something like that and knock out a project so it's tough you know it's tough but I think this week we started to find our groove you know we started to understand kind of boundaries and stuff and uh and life is good life is good um got a question on LinkedIn from Jamie Masler question Ben I appreciate you letting me know exactly what I'm reading um who made it to every one of your happy hours, including every time zone, and there's a huge smiley face, which should tip you off, the answer to that question is Jamie Masler. And for bonus points, who was the only one that ever stayed to the end, including the host? The answer is Jamie Masler. So cheers to you, Jamie, for your accomplishments. Uh, they do not go unnoticed, if not self-promoted. God bless you. That's delicious. I think I need a refill. I need a refill. I got my, I got my ice cup over here. Get some, get some ice over here. I'm gonna show you how, how to make this margarita. It's pretty simple. Um, first, you get a mug full of ice from the kitchen. You bring that with you, and then you. Uh, so, so for me, I've got some mint. I even like to, uh, I like herbs in my cocktails, and uh, some people don't. Obviously, mint is not a, uh, mint is not a traditional you know, herb for a cocktail. I like, uh, I like mint. I like cilantro. I like jalapenos. I like all kinds of things with a, you smell that? Here, smell that. You smell that? Mm. You know, you squeeze it, you, you tap it, you, you beat it just to kind of release some of the oils and whatnot. So I put that in over the rocks and then I bring on a little, uh, little Espelon tequila here, which I think I might've talked about earlier. You know, pour that over there. I usually do a third tequila two-thirds mixer you know stuff like that and we'll just pour that over I pour it over the mint just to kind of kind of catch it a little bit you know you do kind of a little a little swirl mmm it's never mixed properly but it will be all right let's see here uh, shout out to Jennifer Rodriguez shout out for, uh, to Jamie Jen Jen Breen happy Thursday to you Woohoo, congrats. Very nice. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate you. Thank you for supporting Move for Hunger as well. Uh, Casey Myers, congrats. Thank you very much. Jose Botley, super awesome. Great job, University. Thank you, Jose. Appreciate you. Uh, Steve Weidekamp, congratulations to you and University. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you very much. Uh, Brian River Schools out here in NorCal are open for pickup breakfast and lunch during quarantine for the reason you just mentioned. That's great, Brian. Um, and if there's any way to support it, you know, please do. Um, Jamie says, hey, man, Casey Myers, happy, uh, your happy hour was the best. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. We tried. I did four happy hours. I, I heard a complaint. I'm just going to do a happy hour. I heard a complaint that, that, well, what about the guy, what about the West Coast people? You can't just do a happy hour and do it at four o'clock Eastern and not, and not talk about the West Coasters. So I ended up doing one at four o'clock for each time zone. It was four hours. Every time somebody joined, we did a toast to them. Every time somebody said reload, we did a drink. I mean, it got out of control. You know, it got really out of control, um, but it was a great time. It was a marathon, too. I had to sit down. I had to take a break. Love you, too, Jamie. Uh, let's go here to the uh, to Facebook. Let's see what's cracking over here on Facebook. All right. Oh, man, it's getting wild. It's getting wild. People are talking to each other. All right. Um, 
Jack says, let's look at calendars and I will do a show with you. Thank you, Jack. You're the best. I was hoping to do it after COVID, but who knows when that will be. You know, can't wait till there's no more viruses. There's always going to be a virus, you know. Appreciate you, Jack. Can't wait. Um, Janet, let's make that happen. Do you sanitize that box? You need to wash your hands. <sighs> Janet, I love you. If I haven't mentioned that. I heard that it lives on cardboard for like three hours. Um, I've also heard that at this point I don't care. Um, I left it on my doorstep for a while. I think it might have rained on it. I don't know. So, no, I didn't. But I hope that this kills it. Vinny, what's up? Hey, all. Appreciate you, Vinny. Uh, Rachel, that's amazing. Congrats, Ben. Thank you so much, Rachel. I appreciate you very much. Shout out to you, Rachel, and cheers to you as the uh, chairwoman of the 40 Below AMSA committee. She's fantastic in that role. Um, she's just been great. Jack Champell, we'll do a show with you. Let's check calendars, okay? All right, Jack, I do get it. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I got it. Got it. Uh, let's see. Paula Holloway. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Janet toast. Oh, dead. Next question. What is the shark game? Oh, dead. All right. Oh, dead. Um, you got kids. You got was David, I think. Anyway. Um, so on Amazon fire stick, right? My kids four, he'll be five in 16 days. Um, so on the Amazon Fire Stick, there's like a few games you can download for free, you know, and Shark Evolution, Shark E-V-O. Anyway, it's a shark game. You basically eat people, fish, stuff. You get bigger, you get new sharks, you get bigger sharks, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, it's a it's a fun game. You got a hammerhead sharks. I think we're up to a tiger shark at this point. He really wants a great white. Yeah, anyway, it's it's kind of addicting. Um, Janet, Olivia is an amazing, understanding, supportive wife. Oh my God, you're you're right. I I think I married the only woman that could ever deal with me. I really did. Um, I tell her all the time she was she was God's gift to me because she she was made perfectly for me. And um, I hope that uh, I hope she knows how appreciated she is. I don't I don't think she does. <laughs> so I hope I hope I can show her. Um, I hope she comes on tomorrow. I wish. I wish I could like give her a number and you could all text her or something. Be like, you got to come on. Because I think it'd be fun because, you know what? We've moved like 12 times, right? And not only have we moved 12 times, we've, you know, we've, we've moved to like four different states. And she's been, you know, by my side. And we've both had careers for a while. And then now she stays home with the kids. And that has its own challenges. I mean, it's probably, it, I know it's way more challenging than going to work. And... You know, it's just, it's a crazy life, you know? And, and I think, I just, I think her perspective would be a lot of fun. She doesn't think anybody cares. So she just wants to say, maybe like say a hi or something, but I think it could actually be worth some Q and A itself. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ryan says, if anyone has questions about the virus and how to keep themselves and their family safe and wants real answers, I'd be happy to make myself available to share evidence-based knowledge on the topic. So Ryan Beal is a first responder. Ryan's uh, one of my very best friends. Um, I had the honor of being his best man uh, in 2019, I think it was. And he's just an incredible man. And um, yeah, he's a good guy to connect with. So connect with him on Facebook and he will, uh, he'll answer your uh, questions. That's nice of you, Ryan. Um, Janet Turner, what about basil? Some nice drinks made with basil. You're not lying. Basil's another one. Basil's a great one. Um, I've had some stuff with some tarragon in it. Um, you know, a fantastic drink is like a gin and a St. Germain liqueur with like a, a muddled cucumber and some simple syrup. And then from there, you can top that off with like a thyme or a tarragon or, um, you know, frankly, any kind of herb you have handy. I mean, whatever herbs you have handy and the, you know, dill, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can go wild. Just, just muddle something, you know? Throw it with a vegetable, put it in a shaker, strain it if you if you're crazy, or let it or let it float like like I do, you know, and just just get down on it. Uh, Janet Turner, Ryan, that's a great idea. It is right. Let's see here. Basil is nice to drink. Shop. I don't know why I'm getting duplicates here. Wash your hands in tequila. Janet, that is the biggest wasted tequila. Unless I'm washing it over a bucket and then 
siphoning it back into the bottle, but that just sounds, Jan, yeah, that's where I got to draw the line, Jan. And, you know, we agree on most things, but that's where I, that's where I, uh, I draw the line. All right, let's see here. Um, let's see, Jamie, uh, Jamie, 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 Mary Roberts, I hope this kills it, true that. <laughs> Thanks, Mary, appreciate the comment. Let's see if I got any other questions here. I do, I have some other questions here, all right, um, Jaylee Swanson from Reindeer Auto Relocation, in Indianapolis, Indiana. What is the first thing that you want to do when things normalize? I would actually like to ask you all this question. Can you leave this in the comments here? What is the next time? Uh, what is the uh, what is the first thing you want to do when things normalize? What are you looking forward to doing when things when the governor says, "All right, everybody, party's over. Go back to work." What's the first thing you guys are looking forward to doing? I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear that that answer from you all. I'll tell you what mine is. Will I? You know what the first thing I want to do is I I hope that by the fall conference season, I hope I'm going to Worldwide ERC. I hope I'm going to to IAM. You know, in San Diego. I, I hope that I'm out there. I hope I'm I hope I'm going to these places. I hope I'm seeing all of you. I hope I hope I can shake your hands. I hope I can give you a hug. And we're not scared about that. You know, I hope that we can embrace one another. You know? Um Sandra Clary says collect a paycheck. God bless you, Sandra. You know, for sure. I mean, I got good friends out there that 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 they were furloughed, laid off, etc. And, you know, it's, um, yeah, you know, collect a paycheck if I didn't have one, which hopefully I will by then. And then um, give somebody a hug. Go out and meet some people. Hang out with my neighbors. You know, we got a pretty nice neighborhood here. Where people get together and have some drinks and whatnot and go over to each other's house. You know, I'm just looking forward to giving somebody a hug. Um, great question, Jaylee. Uh, what is it like doing this podcast? Says Oded Carmi, DN Van Lines, Boston, Mass. Um, well, dead when I have phenomenal guests like you, it's easy. Um, the truth is, it's hard. It's a pain in the ass, you know. But everything worth doing is hard, you know. Find something that's not hard, and I say, gosh, is that really worth your time? You know, because you get it out what you put in, you know. So I'd, I'd say, find things that are hard. Find things that are uncomfortable. Find things that make you nervous and do them. Um, and this thing is hard, uncomfortable, nervous. I mean, I'm doing a 52 minute monologue right now. And, you know, it's, it's difficult. And I try and my aspiration is on a, on a good week. I do that five times. So it's, it's super freaking difficult. Um, but it's so damn rewarding. I was telling somebody the other day, it's like the best part of my day is doing this show with you guys. And afterwards I feel on cloud nine. I feel so pumped up because I get all this wonderful, you know, comments and love and just, you know, all that stuff. And just to know that I'm connecting with people and that it actually, you know, means something to people. And, you know, Jamie says, love you, bro. I mean, that kind of stuff means the world to me, you know? I mean, that's that's 10 characters somebody typed in and it means the world to me. So, I mean, what's it like? It's 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 the hardest thing and the best thing that I do every single day. Um you know, I mean, you know, my, my kids are fantastic as well. Um, you know, um, being married is great. Um, but I get so, I guess I, this is a special thing for me, you know, and being able to do this with you guys. So, um, so it's extremely rewarding. It's extremely demanding. Um, but, uh, but you, you guys make it worth it. So, so I really, truly appreciate you. Um, Let's see here. Odette says he's going to the bar with my friends and grabbing a drink is his first thing he's doing. Uh, Spencer. Hey, Spencer. Beer, brats, and baseball. Uh, Spencer. Spencer's an economist, by the way, with the um, the labor uh, labor department. Is that is that right? And uh, he's, he's, a, he's I talked to that guy at 2 in the morning the other night. Um, great, smart guy. Uh, beach. It's hot here in Florida. Beaches are closed. Yeah, the beach. Janet says, I want to be able to travel to Colorado to see my first grandbaby born. Oh, and hug my parents. Yeah, I have a nephew. What's my tulip? Oh, here's my boy right here. Come here, Danny boy. 
He wants to play Tomb Blast now. They were asking about the shark game. What's the shark game? Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I think that's a. I think that might be our show today. That might be our time today. Here on Love and Relo. Do you want to wear the headset? No. Okay. I don't even know why I have a headset. There's nothing to hear. It's just me. Anyway, uh, hang out with friends. Did you toot? <laughs> toot some more? Are you tooting on camera? You can't be coming on my show tooting. No. Even I don't toot. <laughs> my goodness. Let's play Toon Blast. Okay, we'll play Toon Blast. Just give me like one minute. Hang out with friends, Charlie says. Jennifer says, looking forward to get back in the office. Ryan Beal, when it's all over, I'll be hoping that this is the last pandemic that we have to deal with. This isolation for my family and friends is lame. Word up. <sighs> Uh, Steve White Camp, I hope so too. Really missing all the friends who would have joined us in Kauai. Ooh, beautiful. Sandra says, congrats. Janet, Jamie says, what a handsome fellow. Somebody said you were handsome. What do you think about that? <laughs> they asked me what it's like working from home. Oh, gosh, I don't know. All right. Hey, say bye to everybody. I'll see you later, guys. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Kelly says two two. That was a great way to wrap it up. I know, right? I'll end on that note. I love you, man. You don't gotta say it back. I don't care. I still love you. <laughs> okay. Super. All right, everybody. See you later. Love and reload, y'all. Take care. <laughs>